what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology nice to see every one of you here wish you a very very happy akshay tritya festival so today is the day when i will be starting with the shrimad bhagavatam and today we will discuss the outline of the bhagavatam and how it starts and what is the background and what is its importance in our life all right so if you're new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there in the description below and before i begin and today i must 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 say god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will definitely be there all right so here it begins the most awaited day so today i will start with recitation of the first verse from the shrimad bhagavatam first verse of the first chapter of the first canto so there are 12 cantos in total which means it's like saying there are 12 parts of the bhagavatam and then every uh, canto has so many chapters and total if you take all the verses in the 12 cantos it comes to around 18000 something so more than 18000 verses so i am planning that in this lifetime i will recite the entire bhagavatam and i will also try to explain i don't know because if i uh, do some mathematical calculation then if i divide 18000 by uh, 365 it suppose i do one verse every day then it comes to around 50 years so now my age is 25 so maybe by the time i am 75 this will be over probably <laughs> that if i do one verse every day so let's see what lord vishnu wants all right so we will start with the verse first and then i will tell you what the bhagavatam is basically and how to study it and what's the mood all right so this will be a long video so please be patient on the day of akshatritya and please listen this video till the end because whatever you do on akshatritya will yield results for eternity okay so let's start so the bhagavatam first starts with an invocation which is a reference to lord vishnu and then the shloka starts so the reference is om namo bhagavate vasudevaya so this is the reference to lord krishna so this says oh my lord krishna shri krishna son of vasudev O all pervading personality of god i offer my respectful obeisances unto you pranam and now goes the first verse so i will again recite the shloka Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janma Dhyasayaton Vaya Ditaratas Charthe Shubhigya Swarat Tene Brahma Nidaya Dikavaye Muhyanti Atasuraya Tejo Vari Mridam Yatha Vini Mayos Trisargo Misha Dhamna Svena Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Paramadhi Mahi so this is the first verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam and let me read the translation. I will not explain the purport. I mean I will explain it later. So the translation goes like this. O oh my Lord Shri Krishna, son of Vasudev. Why, why is it said Vasudev? Because his father was Vasudev. Okay. So Vasudev is the son of Vasudev. So that is why in the verse the there is a dash over the a so that is how sanskrit is oh my lord shri krishna son of vasudev O oh all pervading personality of godhead i offer my respectful obeisances unto you i meditate upon lord shri krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all the creation sustenance and destruction of the manifested universes he is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations <laughs> and he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him abhigya swarat that's the reference to this it is he only who first imparted the vedic knowledge unto the heart of brahma ji tene brahma hridaya adi kavaye he gave the knowledge to the adi kavi who is adi kavi is brahma tene brahma hrida means he imparted the knowledge into lord brahmaji's heart the original living entity brahmaji then it said by him 
even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion yes as one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of na- nature which are the three modes rajoguna is the middle one then tamoguna is that which is down and sattvaguna is there which is at the top only by only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature sattva raja tama appear factual although they are unreal i therefore meditate upon him lord shri krishna who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode which is forever free from the illusory represents of the material world this is a reference to the spiritual world vaikuntha where lord krishna resides i meditate upon him for he is the absolute truth yes there you go so the bhagavatam starts so now i will not say the purport i will be explaining in this first video about something related to the background of the shrimad bhagavatam so how the bhagavatam starts is we all know the story of the mahabharat that the pandavas were victorious finally after the bloody battle of kurukshetra and then lord krishna had left this planet and he went back to the spiritual world after some time and then when the pandavas heard that lord krishna has left then they also left towards the himalayas and then they handed over their uh, yudhishthir maharaj handed over the kingdom to parikshit maharaj who was parikshit parikshit was the son of abhimanyu and abhimanyu was the son of subhadra and arjun so then parikshit maharaj became the undisputed emperor of the entire world and then parikshit maharaj was equally as exemplary and as divine as his grandfathers the pandavas especially like yudhishthir and it is also said in the scriptures that uh, parikshit maharaj had the power of all the five pandavas yes so parikshit maharaj great personality and then what happened one day due to a curse which was given to him by the son of rishi he was cursed to die in 7 days we will discuss about that story some other time that's a reference to kaliyuga how it happens and what happens in kaliyuga but this uh, rishi's son had cursed parikshit maharaj that you will die in 7 days and when that curse is given it doesn't mean that maybe it will happen it means it will happen which means he will die in 7 days okay so then parikshit maharaj goes to his guru and all the other sages and he asks i have only 7 days to live what should i do should i go to goa <laughs> or should i go to france or should i go to paris or should i go somewhere else yes and then the sages say no 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 france no paris no goa you must go and read and listen from the great sages yes read the scriptures listen from them do spiritual activities because you have only 7 days after 7 days you are not going to live in this body yes god knows where you will go <laughs> so you only have 7 days so in those 7 days fully utilize it to remember god and then how the how does that happen when you hear about, hear about god when you listen from the great sages yes then it will happen so then parikshit maharaj left his kingdom and then he went near the rivers and when he went there there was assembly of sages yes the river saraswati and then they went and sat there and when they sat there then all the great sages from the universe assembled yes bhardwaj atri so many my god parshuram everybody whoever was there yes and different versions of the bhagavatam are there so some say it was near one river and some say it was near another river so the main point here is that all the great sages of the universe had assembled there all the saptarishis and all the great personalities from the universe all the demigods everybody in fact and because it was like a uh, as in uh, india they have this bhagwat sapta so it was like a big gathering of spiritual people all the great personalities were there and then what happens is sukhdev goswami is coming there who is sukhdev goswami sukhdev goswami is the 
son of the sage vyasdev vyasdev is the one who had written all the scriptures the vedas puranas upanishads itihas and everything yes and then what happens is sukhdev goswami comes there and everybody requests sukhdev goswami that please speak the shrimad bhagavatam i mean that it's not said that you speak the shrimad bhagavatam but they request him to speak on god and then sukhdev goswami starts speaking okay so then what happens is there is one person in that uh, place in that community whose name is sut goswami so sut goswami is sitting and listening to the bhagavatam which sukhdev goswami is speaking <laughs> okay and then later on sut goswami goes to a forest we will see about that in the coming verses so sut goswami goes to a forest the name of the forest is naimi sharanya okay so naimi sharanya forest and when he goes to the naimi sharanya forest there is another gathering of rishis yes and sages and saints and the leader of that group is shonak rishi so shonak rishi is asking questions to sut goswami we will see what those questions are in a few in in a few verses so what happens is shonak rishi is leading all the rishis which are in naimi sharanya and he is asking questions to sut goswami and then sut goswami answers what he heard from sukhdev goswami yes and that is why uh, it is very important and then the question is from where did sukhdev goswami hear this yes so as i said sukhdev goswami is the son of vyasdev so it's very obvious i mean he heard the shrimad bhagavatam from his father yes so sukhdev goswami heard it from vyasdev and then he told to everybody and when sukhdev goswami was speaking his father vyasdev was also sitting there <laughs> okay so it is not that oh i told my son so that's it i will not sit there no 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 it's not like that there is no junior in spiritual life in spiritual life as my guru says everybody is like your senior <laughs> even if you had brought that person to spiritual life even if you had introduced that person to spirituality everybody is your senior in spiritual life because you don't know how much how much progress who has done in their past lives so because of that we should always see that everybody is senior to us and we are the junior most by that we will have humility and we will always maintain a low profile like hanuman ji used to do hanuman ji when he went to lanka he did not keep boasting to everybody oh i went to lanka i burned the lanka i did this i did that okay so that's what happens and now um, and then how the, does the bhagavatam come finally once uh, vyasdev is writing all the scriptures yes and when he finishes reading all the scriptures uh, writing all the scriptures all of the scriptures then at the end he is unhappy he is frustrated he is miserable he is feeling terrible inside he is feeling that there is something which i did not do now god knows what is that <laughs> so then what happens is narad muni is the guru of vyasdev so narad muni comes there and when narad muni comes he sees the precarious situation of his disciple and then narad muni sarcastically asks we will see about that in a uh, in few verses narad muni says oh great sage how are you basically how's life <laughs> and then vyasdev says oh i am not happy it seems there's some something missing it seems there's something which i have not given and then narad muni says you gave everything you gave all the sutras yantras tantras pujas mudras the vedas puranas upanishads ramayana mahabharata everything you gave but you did not give one book also which exclusively glorifies lord vishnu for pure devotional service which is known as shuddha bhakti which means unalloyed devotion to god yes where you do not ask god for anything for anything material you just want to worship him and love him because who he is and you because of your connection to him so that is devotional service that is bhakti yoga so uh, that is missing okay so what gita is basically the bhagavad gita when you read the bhagavad gita when you finish the bhagavad gita then you will realize who god is and who you are who we are yes we are the living entity and krishna is god then the question comes 
what to do after that so the gita ends with the verse sarva dharman parityajya mame kam sharanam braja aham tvam sarva papebhyo moksha ishyami ma suchaha so this is where the bhagavad gita ends which means lord krishna says that surrender unto me and abandon all varieties of religion now this doesn't mean that oh if you are a muslim or you are a christian then you have to convert to a hindu this doesn't mean that this means that whatever you are doing just surrender unto me and lord krishna says moksha ishami ma suchaha i will deliver you from all sinful reactions ma suchaha do not fear that word is there sarva dharma an parityaja mam ekam sharanam raja surrender exclusively only unto me and then i will deliver you from all sinful reactions so that is where the gita ends so when you finish the gita you understand who you are and who god is but then what to do after that yes so then the shrimad bhagavatam spans from the first to the till 12th canto where there are unlimited almost unlimited number of stories where there is description of the interaction between god and his devotees so in that you will see how god beautifully behaves like one of us yes i mean not in the avatars that obviously he behaves but even when he behaves as the almighty vishnu as the supreme god even then how he deals with all his devotees on a personal level so the aim of the shrimad bhagavatam is to tell us that we can also have a loving relationship with god rather than thinking that oh god is on a he is some kind of personality who will kill us who will punish us who will uh, make us pay for our sins yes as some people say well that is true at one level but that's not what god is ultimately god is a loving being and he wants that uh, we all go to him yes that is what god wants ultimately so that is what the shrimad bhagavatam will tell us that how god is dealing personally with his intimate associates yes swambhu narad shambhu kumaro kapilo manu prahlado janako bhishmo balir vaya sakhi vayam this shloka is there in the bhagavatam yes this shows the 12 mahajans and these 12 mahajans are great personalities who are time and again discussed in the scriptures so that is where the shrimad bhagavatam starts and when vyasdev finally wrote the shrimad bhagavatam he was very happy because now he had written a book which will exclusively tell us who god is not to chant some lakshmi mantra or some ganesh mantra or some kuber mantra or some vishnu mantra on akshay tritiya it's not like that i mean you can do that that's perfectly fine yes we can do that for material prosperity but bhagavatam contains spiritual essence and core spirituality is that it's like the highest bhagavatam is known as amalam puranam yes it is sarva bhuta pramana chakravarti it is the crest jewel of all vedic proofs and all vedic literatures because it was written by vyasdev at the pinnacle of his spiritual maturity when he was dissatisfied unhappy discontent miserable he was sad inside oh i wrote everything but i didn't write a book which exclusively tells how god is that i didn't write yes because in all the other vedas puranas upanishads he has given so many things yes oh he has given about uh, how to how, how to do this puja how to get money how to get wealth how to get a beautiful wife how to get a rich husband yes all these things are there but he did not write any scripture specifically for going to god yes and that is what the shrimad bhagavatam is well all the scriptures have the ultimate aim in god but it's not very direct in the other books but shrimad bhagavatam is very direct everything is out there's only god and nothing else all right so anybody who is interested in core spirituality this is the book yes it is amalam puranam amalam means it is spotless there is no dirt yes so that is what is the shrimad bhagavatam and we will end this video by reciting the shloka once again जन्मादेशु भिग्यस्वरा तेन ब्रह्म हृदयादि कव मुह्यंती अतसूरया तेजो वारी मृद यथा विनिमस्त्रीसर्गो मृषा धामना स्वेन निरस्तकुहाक सत्यम पराम धीम सो वेन वी आर रीडिंग स्क्रिप्चर्स इट इज हाईली एसेंशियल दैट वी रीड द श्लोका नॉट डिरेक्टली दि ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ दि पर्पोट ओके इट इज हाईली एसेंशियल बिकॉज words of the shrimad bhagavatam are highly 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 potent so 
we the sanskrit i mean so we must recite it and ideally we should recite it three times but i will not recite it three times here because due to the interest of time but ideally when we are reading we must make sure that we are doing that okay so that is it from my side this is the first video the introduction to shambhal bhagavatam uh, it can be a bit complex because there are so many things which i said from vyasdev to sukhdev goswami to sut goswami to shona krishis and then ultimately it was written by vyasdev only so in the bhagavatam you will always find this zoom in zoom out yes sometimes you will see suta vacha which means sut goswami is speaking sometimes you will see shona kuvacha which means shona krishi is speaking sometimes you will see suka vacha which means sukhdev goswami is speaking sometimes you will see rajo vacha rajo vacha means parikshit maharaj rajo means king so he is the king he is he is asking question so uh this goes on for 7 days and at the end of the 7 day parikshit maharaj is killed by takshak and he goes back to the spiritual world so all those things and whatever the things are there which i have told you everything is there so it's coming okay so halt <laughs> hold on everything will be coming and that is there everything is there in the bhagavatam okay so and then in the fifth canto we have the cosmology also so i will also be uh, speaking on that when i reach the fifth canto but that's very far okay so stay tuned shiva bhagavatam has started so let us uh, plunder the riches of spiritual wisdom and spiritual knowledge which is there this is not available anywhere yes anywhere in the planet even in the universe is nowhere it is available only here it is available <laughs> so let us not miss this opportunity to uh plunder the resources yes because today is akshay trithi and whatever you do today remains akshay which means it never gets dismantled it only keep, keeps increasing so today if we hear this and today if we read this then we will be able to finish all the 18000 verses all right so that is it from my side if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website and before i end i will again say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and once again a very very happy akshay tritiya festival please do donations and chant some mantras and go to the temple and pay your respects to your gurus your counselors guides and to your parents and to your seniors and to your elders and help somebody if you can today all right there you go wish you good luck bye bye